Alright guys, welcome back to Formula 1 News. Big updates today on the drama regarding the cost cap that's currently going down here in Formula 1. Christian Horner says categorically Red Bull did not breach the limit in 2022 and the two teams in the hottest water it seems with the FAA auditors are partly Red Bull but mainly Aston Martin and Mercedes. What would happen if Mercedes breached the cap especially in the wake of comments from Lewis Hamilton saying that some teams might be tempted if the punishment is not going to be particularly severe. Very much interested to hear your thoughts in the comments. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. Couple of things here. Mercedes may be throwing a little bit of shade the way of Lando Norris because, uh, well, here's the beautiful trophy that Hamilton won back in 2013. I think it was his first win with Mercedes actually after he joined the team. And as they say, oh, now this is a special one. Of course, the trophy's fully intact. Norris did, in fairness, after what we discussed yesterday, apologize on social media for breaking the trophy also to the company that was involved in making it in the first place. So you can say that either Lando realized that maybe he should apologize or his PR team told him, look, probably better put out a few statements on this. So definitely wanted to address that. But let's talk cost cap, right? Because Red Bull say that the penalty they got for breaching the cap in 2021, that was then applied at the end of 2022 and for the next 12 months, costs them around about a tenth and a half per lap in terms of extra developments they could have done had they not had this cost cap penalty for the wind tunnel testing time. Now, you know, whether you really buy that or not, and also Christian Honoran said, that by the end of the season, it's going to pose a threat to them winning every race. Kind of a very luxurious position to find yourself in when the biggest threat you have is that you're not going to win absolutely every race and you might only win, you know, 99% of the races this season. But still, that's what Christian Order says. And if Christian Order says something... You know, you know how this guy operates, right? You do have to take it all with a grain of salt. But he says that their intention to win every single race is under serious threat by the cost cap penalty as the season progresses. And to such an extent that they have apparently now switched all of their focus to next year's cars. They might bring some further updates to the RB19 circuit specific changes, but their focus is now pretty much all on next year's car, as will need to be the case shortly for other teams as well. Their car is so much quicker than everybody else's in race conditions and around Spa I mean I can't imagine the winning margin Verstappen's going to have if Perez is out of position in qualifying again because I mean he was an absolute force around there last year winning from P14 in the space of like 10 laps the race was already won but in Spa we will get upgrades for Aston Martin I think maybe something else for McLaren and certainly also for Mercedes so that will be where those teams will try to show that they can actually be competitive as the season progresses but Red Bull are now saying yep we're done with this year we're going to next Next year pretty much fully and well the cost cap is partly involved into the reasons why but for 2022's cost cap that's when the drama emerged over the last few days so since pretty much March this year the FIA has been auditing all of the accounts from all of the teams from last season 2022 in 2021 at the cost cap from that year that was analyzed roughly this time last year it took a lot longer for them to analyze everything they didn't have anywhere near enough accountants or auditors on the job and they didn't do a particularly thorough job by all accounts. This year they've been way more in depth. They've been sending people to the factories to do like impromptu interviews like uncalled for unexpected interviews by certain individuals to request whether some of the information might be getting shared via a different department to those teams. We talked about the implications of that a few days ago but the cost cap itself was okay 135 million it was meant to be but with the inflationary things and some other changes it was more like 153 million they had to hit this time last year in 2022. If they breached the cap, you would expect serious penalties to be applied. Maybe worse penalties than what Red Bull got last year, especially if there was to be a repeat offence. But Christian Horner said this weekend to Sky that they were several million under the 2022 cost cap due to not developing that much in season and minimal crash damage. Now, there's been, I couldn't find the original quote on this. It doesn't seem to really be anywhere. And some people thought he said 7 million, but I think he actually said 7 several million and also some people interpreted it that he was saying that we were several million dollars under but then with the crash damage that then brought us up closer to the amount because I don't think Red Bull are going to submit like I don't think they're going to be several million under unless they were really concerned that there were a lot of grey areas that the FEA might disagree with I don't imagine they would submit a um, you know maybe they would but it seems a little bit strange to be several million under when you know every $250,000 matters as Mercedes said that's a new front wing 
thing. And that was the big talking point during the 2022 season about what happened back in 2021 towards the end of that year. But Horner says that Red Bull are clean. And I don't think he would be saying this if he didn't, well, if he didn't have a lot of confidence, they would be. Because I don't imagine he'd want to put this out publicly because it's not like Toto Wolf or like anyone from Aston Martin have said, oh yeah, well, you know, we're fine. We're several million under, no problem at all. But Horner's confident enough to say that they are. So Red Bull believe they're not going to find themselves in any issues this year for last year's cost cap. Now, a few days ago before the Grand Prix, the rumor was that there were three teams that were under investigation, one of which was meant to be Alpine. That's now been the latest rumor says that Alpine, it's not Alpine. And if it was Alpine, you got to wonder what were they spending all that money on, to be honest. But okay, it's apparently not Alpine. Aston Martin, Red Bull, Mercedes. But the German press believed, as does now the Italian press, that Mercedes is at a higher risk of breaching it than Red Bull are. So now we fast forward to pretty much the present day. There are questions around Red Bull. The main questions around Red Bull are related to a similar story to what happened last year with Adrian Newey, when he's not technically an employee of Red Bull, he's like a contractor for like basically they pay his company for his services, but yet he is the CTO of Red Bull Racing and therefore they were trying to work out with the cost cap, does he fall under, should he be considered under the cost cap basically? Red Bull said no, the FAA auditors said yes. I believe it's the top three earning individuals in the company who are excluded from the cap, which pretty much includes the drivers and then like one or two other people I think. But um, if that's not you, then your salary is considered under the cap. And that's why Helmut Marko is now being called into question in terms of the organizational chart. Helmut Marko is there every single race, yet he is not among the top three managers. So I think it's the two drivers and then the managers that are excluded, whose conversation is not included in the 136 million with the add-ons that we discussed. Marco himself said that he has a contract until 2024. So um, his contract on paper should not be able to escape the budget cap radar, but apparently it's not been included by Rebel in their calculations. So that's a little bit of a gray area. But the two teams that are meant to be in the firing line here are Aston Martin and Mercedes. Aston wouldn't be a massive surprise. They had a bit of a procedural breach in 2022 for the 2021 season. It's always a bit complicated, but whenever we're talking about cost cap stuff, we're talking the year after based on the entirety of the year before. And Aston brought a B-spec car early in that year. They made massive progress, presumably behind the scenes last year, Aston Martin, for this year's car during the end of the 2022 year. Mercedes as well, they did a lot of changes. They had the brand new concept at the start of the year. Year. They made significant progress and upgrades throughout the season, culminating in a victory at Brazil that they probably wish they never had because they probably would have changed their concept going into this season and aligned more closely with the Red Bull. But those are the two teams that are in conversation. Now, Mercedes, as I've said plenty of times, can't really, from like a cheating organizational reputation perspective, can't really be perceived to be breaching it. And Toto Wolff has said that, oh no, we're going to be fine. But um, still, he's also mentioned that they have a massive team of accountants trying to find ways around some of the rules. And would you be surprised if Mercedes are pushing their luck, especially when it is the perception of Hamilton and Russell, and I'm sure Toto Wolff as well, that Red Bull got away very lightly with their punishment last year. A $7 million fine, a fine that wasn't even taken out of their cost cap. It was just a fine they had to pay, which is just such an irrelevant sum of money. And then the reduction in testing time, which is, you know, Red Bull keeps saying it's significant, but it doesn't really seem to be. Let's be honest, the way this season is going so far and the fact that they're probably going to be ahead again at the start of next season. As Hamilton says, it wasn't really a big punishment last time. So there'll be people that will probably go for it again, knowing they're just going to get slapped on the wrist. Now, Domeno Carly has said from Formula One management that if anyone breaches it this time it's going to be sporting penalties that is reduction in points right and a more severe penalty than last year and if it was Red Bull doing it again if theoretically that was to be the case I'd imagine that for a repeat offense there'd be a greater punishment but for a first time offense for let's say Mercedes or for Aston Martin would they give a greater punishment than Red Bull got would it be similar it's very difficult to say. If Mercedes were to have breached it and they then get a far more severe punishment this year than Red Bull got last year, that's going to cause a lot of controversy in and of itself. So definitely intrigued to your thoughts in the comments. This is early days at this point. There's many things around the cost cap. It's not clear. There are certain teams, Mercedes, Aston, Red Bull included, that are having these conversations with the FEA to try and resolve these disputes over what they perceive to have been a breach. And the FEA say this is breached. They say it's not. 
A similar thing was happening last year. In the end, Red Bull got done and maybe we'll see a similar development over the coming weeks. But it's going to be a couple of weeks away before we get further information on this. I think it's going to be, um, you know, roughly the start of August, I think, the teams are going to get informed about whether they've been in the good books, basically. And then start of September is when we'd expect to see any punishment start to get given out if there have been any discrepancies. Very much intrigued to your thoughts on that in the comment section below. I wonder what it means to Mercedes in terms of focusing on next year's W15. Total Wolf has also mentioned that they need a lot of changes for next year's car. The direction our team is developing in is quite interesting. We see opportunities and we don't hesitate to leave no stone unturned, looking at every concept we have seen in other cars, which is an interesting statement because it implies that Mercedes aren't fully sure what they're doing for next year. There's many things they're looking at, there's many ideas, and they want to probably pursue the Red Bull concept slightly further, as Hamilton has made very clear in interviews that he's done over the last couple of days, that he's a broken record, constantly telling Mercedes, hey, we need to change this, we need to make this look like the Red Bull, because frankly, that's kind of what McLaren have done, and made massive steps to now be the second fastest team ahead of Mercedes, even though that's where Aston Martin occupies the majority of the season so far. Quickly before we close out then, I thought this was tragic as it is hilarious frankly that for the Las Vegas Grand Prix later this year F1 is threatening to block off venues if they don't pay a licensing fee to enable people to watch. I think the idea is that if you're in a hotel that can see part of the track F1 want to ensure you can't see the track unless you pay. Liberty Media has apparently sent letters to restaurants, bars and clubs charging them $1,500 a head for a licensing fee or they will use barricades and black blinding lights to block the customers peeking into the race, which is just like, this is so late stage stuff. But um, yeah, I don't know what you guys think about that. I think it's kind of, I mean, well, maybe they think this is justified. Sounds a bit ridiculous to me. And apparently one casino owner said it seems insane that they're asking for money for a public event that is taking place in the streets, which is also probably a fair point. So very much to to your thoughts in the comments below. And just quickly to mention the predictions for the race weekend this time round in Spa is looking from the weather perspective like it could be raining again. So, I mean, look, I don't want to talk about 2021 Spa Belgian Grand Prix, but we might have something similar on our hands, especially in light of the incident in which Delano Van Toff lost his life in former Alpine a few weeks ago at Spa in rainy conditions. It's, um, it's treacherous, absolutely. So very much intrigued to your thoughts in the comments. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. Take care, and I'll see you next time.